Golfer's elbow. Medial epicondylitis. I'm Dr. Lucius Pomerantz, board certified orthopedic surgeon and specialist in the arm. I'm also a black belt in Brazilian Jiu Jitsu and I'm trying to keep those of you who are active and want to stay that way informed on how our bodies work and how to keep them moving. I use the context of combat sports as an extreme of what we put our bodies through. Continuing with my series on tendon issues around the elbow. Here's another common issue that many people have to deal with. It is golfer's elbow, also known as medial epicondylitis or even thrower's elbow. This is not as common as tennis elbow, being outnumbered by a ratio of probably closer to seven to one. As many of you have seen my tennis elbow video know, these names do not quite grasp what is going on and you certainly do not need to play golf to have golfer's elbow. So, the symptoms of golfer's elbow. Pain, often a burning pain, is located at the inside or medial aspect of the elbow. The pain often is caused by gripping, carrying, or lifting things. There will be pain with pressure right at the point on the inside of your elbow, and sometimes into the muscles that come down from there, just a little further down the arm. Resisted wrist flexion and pronation often elicit symptoms. Since the muscles that can be involved cross the elbow joint, sometimes the pain is worse when the elbow is straight as opposed to bent. Often, there can be swelling at the medial aspect of the elbow. Sometimes, a nerve can get irritated, and this can cause some numbness and tingling down the arm. So the anatomy. The medial epicondyle is the point of bone that you feel at the inside of your elbow. It is part of the humerus bone. There are many muscles that attach to this part of the bone, and their job is primarily to flex the wrist and the fingers and pronate the forearm, have the hand face down. Also attaching to the medial epicondyle is the ulnar collateral ligament, which provides support to the elbow joint and helps resist valgus forces. Think of valgus forces, what a pitcher or thrower puts their elbow through a lot. And it's what is torn when a thrower needs Tommy John surgery. Another way that the ulnar collateral ligament has been shown to be injured is or can be stretched or torn a little bit when trying to do a hitchhiker escape from an arm bar. Just behind the medial epicondyle is your funny bone, or ulnar nerve as it passes the elbow. The flexor carpi radialis and pronator teres muscles are thought to be the most commonly involved muscles with golfer's elbow, but golfer's elbow can also involve all of the flexor tendons at the medial epicondyle, including the finger flexors. Just like with tennis elbow, there is not the usual inflammatory healing response that you would expect to see after an injury. When looked at under a microscope, you will see tissues that are chronically injured, but not healing, like one would certainly expect. Why does it happen? It's usually attributed to overuse and repetitive stress to the area. It usually affects people as they reach their 40s. There is a repetitive micro tearing where these muscles start at the medial epicondyle though sometimes a single traumatic event can cause this injury. This could be a sudden contracture of the muscles or a direct impact. Activities that require wrist flexion, pronation, finger flexion can contribute to this injury. This could be hammering or gripping or throwing or lifting. Poor body mechanics with complex motions like throwing, improper technique and or poor equipment may all contribute to causing this issue. So the diagnosis, it is almost always a clinical diagnosis. This means that all the doctor needs to do is really take a look and perform an exam. That being said, x-rays are often ordered as it's an easy screening tool that's fast to obtain. If the diagnosis is not clear, then other imaging such as ultrasound or MRI can add some additional detail. Other possible problems that can look like medial epicondylitis include injury to the ulnar collateral ligament, which can also happen with repetitive stress or a single traumatic event, or there can be irritation of the ulnar nerve at the elbow. When this is happening, it's called cubital tunnel syndrome and is usually associated with numbness into the small finger and part of the ring finger and can result in weakness in the hand, not something you want to mess with. 
So how do you treat golfer's elbow? Fortunately, surgery is almost never needed. Unfortunately, sometimes it takes more than a year for the symptoms to really improve. Treatment usually goes something like this. First, rest and avoidance of activities that are causing the issue. Two, non-steroidal anti-inflammatory medications and bracing. There are straps that go all around the upper forearm. You can place it about an inch or two centimeters just down from the medial epicondyle. This takes pressure off the tendons that attach to that area, or you can wear a wrist brace, and that allows the tendons that flex your wrist to rest, taking pressure off the medial epicondyle muscles. Next, there is physical therapy. This includes establishing a full painless range of motion, then starting some stretching, then eventually strengthening. Once a patient has returned to their pre-injury strength, then sports can be restarted. Other things like injection with something like corticosteroids or PRP, platelet-rich plasma, you can see my tennis elbow for more detail on that, are all being looked at and can help. Other things like CBD oil or lots of other treatments such as Botox have all been looked at might help a little bit, but the definitive research is still pending. And then lastly, avoidance of activities that would anger the tissues on the medial elbow. This could be using something with a bigger grip. This could be changing the way you lift weights. This could be, if you're a jujitsu guy, choosing to go no gi instead of with the gi more often than not. These activities can all help save the aggravation that can happen. I do want to stress that improved technique, especially with complex motions like throwing, can be very helpful in unloading the forces that our medial elbow sees. Now, sometimes all of those other things don't work. It's been six to 12 months and you have to consider surgery. It's rare, but sometimes we do surgery for this issue. Usually, just like with tennis elbow, the diseased tendon is cut away. Sometimes the tendons are just released, sometimes they're repaired, Sometimes we actually drill into the bone, into the medial epicondyle to elicit a healing response. Whatever the surgery may be, most of the time we're able to let people get back to normalish activities around six weeks. Of course, if the ulnar nerve is irritated, we have to address that. And if the ligament was torn, we also have to address that. So there you go. Brief view at golfer's elbow, thrower's elbow, medial epicondylitis. It is very common especially in combat sport athletes. Good thing we have good treatment for it, but it is definitely a nuisance when you have it. If you like these videos, please don't forget to like and share and subscribe. Please see my Instagram. It's got some other interesting topics and some relatively cool stuff I'd like to think. Thank you for watching. I'm Dr. Lucius Pomerantz. Take care of your body and it will take care of you. Let's keep moving.